So let's go. Uh, hello, thank you for being on my talk. Uh, I know, it's, it's, as Paul said, there's always very nice talks competing on the same slot. So thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Albert, you can see my uh, address there uh, and my IRC nick and handle in most of the services out there is TSDGEOS. It's, I know it's hard, don't try to pronounce it, just write it. Okay, so uh, I cannot change the slides. I can change the slides, good. Uh, so a bit of who I, uh, I'm being a developer in KD since 2003. I'm very close to my 20th anniversary already. So that's a lot. Uh, obviously, since I've been in KD for a long time, I've done a lot of things. Uh, just a few, few things there to mention. KPDF that later became Ocular. I've been doing translations, both like translating to Catalan and as a co-coordinator co with Luigi for the translators. I've been doing releases uh, of KD gear and all the things that we named before KD gear that are the same thing. Worked with games, Edu, I was the founding president of KD España, which is the local uh, association for KD in Spain. I was a board member for the KDEV, so yeah, a bit of everything. Uh, now, you maybe already know that, uh, no, knew that because I, I've been in KD for a long time, uh, and people meet me here, but uh, the, the, this talk is also about Qt, right? So let me speak about the Qt side. Uh, Qt is a bit more strict uh, than us, KD, uh, while giving people committing powers, uh, so they are, so you can, they, you can contribute lots of patches and still not get approval uh, rights, which approval rights mean you can approve somebody else's patches, right? So I, I got a cute approval uh, rights in 2018, which is fine. I mean, uh, I've contributed 400 patches, which depending who you ask, it might be a lot or, or might be not a lot. Uh, I think it's, it's a, good number. I don't feel like I've contributed a uh, huge amount of code, but yeah, I, I know a bit how it works. So I think it's fair. Uh, so after the introduction, a uh, disclaimer, this is my opinion, right? This is not KDE's opinion. This is not uh, my employer's opinion. This is just my opinion, right? Because I mean, there's some things we're going to talk about, which are history and history is more or less set in stone, so that's probably true, though it's always interpretable. Uh, but some of the things are going to be my interpretation on, on current events, right? So just to make clear, this is just me. If you have to uh, hate or flame someone, uh, hate me. So a bit of history. Uh, I hope you all know Qt is this thing we use in KDE to do uh, user interfaces, right? Uh, so it was introduced in 1996, and it used something uh, called the Qt Free Edition License, which uh, you could not redistribute, really so it, it made it not be free software. Right? I'm going to do a, a small uh, side here. If you're ever doing some software and you want to write a license for it, do not write a license for it. There's already a gazillion of licenses out there. So just pick one that already exists. Writing a license is very, very hard. So don't do it, right? just reuse something. It's, I, I'm 99.999% sure that there's a license out there that does what you want, right? So it's, then it was write, written by lawyers and, and all those people that know better than us, engineers, coders, whatever, uh, what to do. So yeah, don't do that. Then it happened that uh, KD started using Qt and, and KD was so amazing compared to what there was in Linux uh, before. People started to get worried, right? Because even though KD was GPL, Qt wasn't, uh, and it wasn't even free software, right? So it was like, oh, what do we do here? Like, uh, this, is, this is nice, but it's, it's not nice because of the license. And so uh, the, the Qt people recognized that. And, and in 1998, they, they, together with us, they, we created this thing called the KDE Free Qt Foundation, which is always a mouthful to say, right? And, and the first 
thing that the, the, the foundation is, which is very clear, is the purpose of the foundation is guaranteeing that Qt will be available for free software now and in the future, right? So that's what, what the foundation is about. Like the core, like the mandate of the foundation is making sure that happens, right? And then there's a few other uh, clauses which are uh, supposed to be a bit about getting the people that were developing Qt, which uh, back then was troll tech. Uh, I didn't make a typo in the space. If you look at the announcement, there's a, there's a space there. So I guess they changed their naming later because we're all used to, uh, to, to getting troll tech written together. But the announcement was uh, with a space in the middle. So it's not my fault. Uh, so, so there's a few clauses there that say, well, I mean, you know, you have to release uh, Qt uh, every so often. And if, if you don't, it's going to be relicensed. Uh, well, the foundation will have the right to relicense under VSD license. Right? There's all of legalese uh, around that. But so that's a bit to make sure that Qt just keeps on developing and, and releasing uh, a free version of Qt we could use. Right? So moving a bit forward, uh, there's this thing, and, and we were using it was Q1 and Q2 and Q3 and Q4, and, and eventually the Q5, right? Well, they, they've done a Q6 now, but uh, let's not uh, get afraid of ourselves. So when they did Q, Q5, they realized that, well, I mean, this is going to be a, a biggest change, and, and you know, let's, let's make Q4.8 long-term support. So this way we can have people stay in Q4.8 for a while, uh, while we make sure that Qt5 gets mature enough and, and everything can be ported to it, right? And that was actually a, a very good idea. You can see that Plasma 5 was only released in, in 2014, so that's two years after Qt5, right? So there was a whole two years that Qt5 was already released, but Plasma, or whatever you would call it, KDE desktop uh, back then, I don't remember, Plasma 4 already, right? Yeah, Plasma was still based on, on Qt4, right? So it makes sense to be to be having releases of Qt4 in case there's small bugs or, or whatever, right? So you can see that the last Qt4 8 release was in May 2015, so that's four years after 4 8. So that, that's a very good decision, uh, in my opinion, from the Qt company, well, not the Qt company. Uh, I don't know who was developing Qt back then, probably still Trolltech or Nokia. I don't remember. Anyhow, uh, the people that were developing Qt, very good decision for them, making sure that we could use a stable Qt while we worked on the next version of Plasma that used the new Qt, right? So fast forward a bit, a bit more and, and we get Qt5, right? And Qt5, so in Qt4, they had never had the concept of long-term support until the last version, right? Until Qt 4.8. In Qt 5, they introduced the concept a bit uh, more, and every three versions after 5.6, you got a, a long-term support, right? So you got 5.6, 5.9, 5.12, and 5.15 as, as long-term support. Uh, Qt 5.12, it's still supported as long-term support. There was a release in May this year. So there was a, I don't remember the, the dot, I think it was 5.12.11. So th th they've been doing 5.12 for a while and, and they did another one uh, just in May this year. One of the things that happened last year in January is that they announced that Qt 5.15 wouldn't, uh, it would be LTS, but only for commercial customers, right? Which is like, that's not cool, right? Because Okay, whatever. I mean, you do it. You do this. Like most of the people doing uh, the Qt development are, are from the Qt company. So sure, you get you get to decide that. But one of the reasons they 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 argued right was like, yeah, you know, it's like we need lots of manpower to do this backporting to Qt five fifteen. So yeah, we're gonna put it behind the uh, commercial customers. So you know, they they pays for itself. And fair enough. I mean. Sure, there's lots of work to do, uh, but porting stuff and whatnot. But I mean, they're still releasing 5.12, right? So that that argument does, I don't know, doesn't work a lot because like, if, why do you still release 5.12 as an open source product, but not 5.15? Right? I don't know. That's their decision. There's not much we can do about it, right? Uh, they are uh, their own. 
entity and they will do whatever they think it's better for them. Uh, so yeah, the first release, uh, the first commercial release of Qt 5.15 was, was in March this year, one month earlier <laughs> than the last 5.12. So do we need, as, as KDE, long-term support? Personally, I think we don't in the most of the cases, right? Until until now, we have not had been using neither 5.6 or 5.9 nor 5.12 extensively, right? Both, both most of our distribution ch channels, be it like either like Linux distributions or BSD distributions or, or those kind of uh, big uh, monsters that release our software together with a, a million more things, they always basically been either on the last version, if it's a rolling release kind of thing, or on the cute version that was released when they did a version, right? So like if you had Fedora 31, so what, well, whatever, Fedora 31 had the cute that was late released when Fedora 31, right? There were not, there were not really many use cases for, for the LTS and, and for things we release ourselves, like the app images or the Windows binaries and stuff, we mostly always went to the last queue too, right? So there's, there, we didn't really use the long-term support of Qt much, but Qt 5.15 is a special case, right? It's, it's, it's the same that happened with Qt 4. Qt 6 has been released and there's been 6.0 and 6.1 and 6.2 is almost around the corner. And now maybe with Qt 6.2, we could start using it, but it's gonna be a while until, until we do, right? Uh, if you've been uh, during the week attending the frameworks uh, talks or, or buffs, it's it's not gonna happen overnight, right? So we are going to to be using Qt 5.15 for a while. So, well, we, we did the best thing we could, given that uh, the Qt company didn't want to keep a, a, a an open source version of Qt 5.15, which is creating our, our patch collection, right? We don't need a patch collection. It, it might have just been the distros doing patches, right? This, this happens uh, relatively often that for unreleased software, distros keep uh, patches on top of the, the released software. But that's just so terrible. Like you, you go and check the patches that one distro ships against one package and then that hasn't been released maybe for like 10 years and go to another distro and they have different patches and it's like, that's not good. <laughs> so we, we try to, to make that that boom happen uh, and centralize everything in one place, right? So that's what the patch collection is. So uh, wh what did you mean by patch collection? <laughs> it's, 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 it's a weird name. Uh, well, so it's actually not a patch collection. It's just a, a Git repositories, right? So they are hosted in, in Invent, which is our GitLab. Uh, that that thing over there, uh, invent.kd slash kit slash kit, uh, has like, I don't know, uh, 20 or more repositories inside, which is all the cute repositories, right? It's about, it's basically a mirror of those repositories. It gets updated every three hours, I think, last time I, I talked with this admin. And on top of the mirroring, uh, we have our own branch, right? So it, each of the, those repositories has a kd slash 515 branch, which is where we put our things. Uh, that branch was created on the latest commit available for the 5.15 branch, which is good because, uh, so that's past uh, 5.15.12, right? They, they, there, there are a few more commits there than the, uh, sorry, 5.15.2. There's a few more commits there than that there are in the latest available tarball. Uh, we have to assume those are nice book fixes that the cute people wanted to have released. So that's why we started from there. Unfortunately, some of the Git repos had changed version already and some haven't. So some of the Git repos started calling themselves 5.15.3 and, and some others still didn't. So it's not super awesome if you compile everything from there, but life is tough. So, as you can see, it's not really a patch collection. It's just Git commits, right? I mean, Git commits are patches, but yeah, I mean, it just, they're actually Git commits, right? So in that KD 515 branch, uh, well, branches, like, well, one for each uh, repository, we have commits that fix at least one of the issues, uh, which is either security issues, right? So like uh, there's a 
huge uh, issue with the PNG handler. And when you load the PNG, it will delete all your files, right? I mean, that hasn't happened, and it probably won't happen, but that would be one of the cases that would happen. Uh, or crashes, like when I, I don't know, connect to a website that uses uh, SSL, blah, 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 it crashes, so we would uh, fix that. Or, I mean, more generic functional defects, like, I don't know, there's something wrong with Qt push button. And, I mean, that's that's kind of strange because Qt is very well tested and very well used, so it would be much more of an edge case, right, if, if that happens, but we just covered our bases, right? Okay. So given your description, you, you could like the description I, I just gave, you could say, well, then you did a fork, right? You call it a fork, you don't call it a patch collection, which is like nobody knows what the patch collection is. People know what a fork is. But the thing is, it's, we don't think it's a fork. We don't have new features, right? So it's, it's only uh, bug fixes uh, in the broad term of, of, of a bug fix. And on top of that, we require every patch that we're merging to our branch to have it been first merged or released or developed or committed uh, in the Qt dev branch, right? The Qt dev branch is where the Qt 6 development is happening. And, and that makes a lot of sense because eventually we're going to go to Qt 6, right? As we mentioned, it's going to be this year or next year or the other, but we will use Qt 6 at some point. And all the fixes we have for 5.15, we obviously want them to also be in Qt 6. So just, just do that. Let's put them in Qt 6, and then we just cherry pick them into our branch, and, and everyone's happy. Right? Of course, there's a star there in, in, in every, right? So it's every star patch. We already actually have at least one patch that is not upstream, and that's because the file disappeared, right? So uh, that file doesn't exist anymore on Qt 6. So obviously, there's no reason for for that uh, fix to be in Qt 6. So, well, I mean, we're not going to give ourselves some rules that are uh, so, so, I mean, strong that prevent us from actually fixing what we want, right? So the guideline is if we backport the patch, it has to be a backport, right? So it has to come from Qt 6. But if there is a really, 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 really good reason for that patch not to be in Qt 6, like the class doesn't exist anymore, well, then we all we will accept the patch potentially, right? Uh, we have a free software focus in this in this patch collection or non-fork, as I call it sometimes. If you come to us and say, you know, there's this commit in Git 6 that makes it not crash in QNX or integrity, it's like, yeah, I know. Congratulations, you, you can carry this patch yourself. Right? It's like, there is no free software in, in, in QNX that I know of. Or, or if there is, it's, it's very limited and we don't have uh, access to QNX or whatever. So it's like, yeah, free software focus, right? Which yeah, it makes sense. So who, who decides what goes in and what doesn't go in? Right? So it's created by a small group of people. Uh, at the moment, I think it's uh, eight people or seven people, counting myself. So it's, it's not very big, but it's, it's reasonable, right? So we can each other make sure that we're not making mistakes when uh, cherry picking patches and, and whatnot. Uh, that group of people is the intersection of people that are KD developers and Qt approvers. So it, it's it's people that know both worlds, like the free software world and, and the KD and the Qt world, which is also free software but more narrow in Qt. Uh, better. So we thought that was a good starting point, right? Obviously, that doesn't mean that if you're a free software developer that is doing Qt software outside of KDE uh, and you're a Qt approver, or maybe not a Qt approver, but you can prove to us that you know Qt very well and you want to join helping us, talk to us. I mean, this is not a, a very select club, right? It's just a club that we try to make uh, big enough that it would work, but we're happy to have more people on board. Okay, so now you've 
told me what it is and, and it sounds like a good idea, right? As a user, I, I want the fixes, right? That's what users want. I mean, they sometimes also want features, shiny new features that are good for users, but they also want fixes. So how do I get those fixes? That, that's, yeah, that's a bit of the hard part right now. Uh, we're not making releases, and I know this is not very, this is a bit controversial sometimes, but we decided not to make releases because we, how do you make a release, right? So the, the kids company has released something they called 5.15.3. We could also make a release and call it 5.15.3, but that would be the most confusing thing ever, right? So we should not do that. Uh, so we could call it 5.15.2 dot random number or dot kd dot one. That might work, but when do we make the releases? It's like we just get patches into our Git repo as we see the problems being an issue, right? So we see an issue, it's like, oh, this needs fixed and we put it. So would we do a release every day <laughs> or, or every time we do a commit? I don't know. We we went for the uh, decision of not making releases. Obviously, as I, everything can be changed. There was a recent discussion on the release team about this, but it didn't. It kind of died a little. So as a user, you can kind of manually compile it from Git. This is terrible. It will take forever uh, once you start compiling Git Web Engine. But that's that's one way. Uh, if you're a developer, uh, we switched KD source deal to use it. Uh, I think last week, so you will get it uh, probably. If you're using uh, Flatpak app, uh, the Flatpak grind time is built from from the Qt, the the, the, the non fork we have of Qt, so every Flatpak app is fine. I know it's used in some distros. Uh, to be honest, I, I I must apologize here because I didn't do as much research as I should have. I know uh, Arch Linux uses it. Uh, I'm almost sure Gentoo uses it. I saw a patch yesterday in for OpenSUSE to start using it. I think uh, it, it, it said use the KDE patch collection. I, I know I don't know to which. I mean OpenSUSE is a bit confusing so, to me sometimes because it has lots of releases going on. So I don't know to which of the releases it applies, but there is some work going on there. So I think as a user, you should talk to your distro and ask if they're using it. And as a distro, you should talk to us if you don't and explain us your, your pain points. I, I do acknowledge that the not release part is a pain point. So let's try to have a better conversation there if it's, if it's really blocking you. But I think it's a good idea that people start using it. So if you're a developer, how can you help, right? So we're, we're kind of lucky here in the sense that the Qt development workflow changed recently and they decided that everything is gonna go to the development branch and then fixes that are actually, like commits that are actually fixes will be uh, cherry picked back port to the branches that need fixing, right? So if you fix, something nowadays in dev, you would mar mark it with, okay, this is, this fix is a bug, please backport it to 6.2, maybe 6.1 and 5.15, right? Which is great because then we can just go to the commit log and see everything that has been marked as this needs to be cherry picked to 5.15. So I wrote like 10 lines of terrible script and, and brought a, a bot, well, not a bot, a script that I run like I don't know, every day, every two days, that just creates a, a, an issue in, in this URL saying, okay, I found the commit that is marked as this should be a back port to 515. Maybe we, we could have a look, right? One thing we decided to do is to not backport everything blindly, right? I mean, we could have done it that. Probably not the best of ideas, right? Because I mean, the fact that someone made a commit against Deb and said, "Yeah, this this needs to be port to 5.15," doesn't mean that a it will actually apply one to one, right? It happens often that you need to do small changes because the code has changed from from six to fifteen, and b I mean, it doesn't mean that it might not break something in fifteen, and 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 since we don't see 
everything that goes on on the 515 branch, they might have had a commit that just went directly there and we didn't see it. So yeah, we just backport the things that we see that make sense. I mean, we've backported a lot of uh, Wayland things because Wayland is one of the things we're working and, and, and it, it's slowly improving, right? So we've backported lots of those. We've backported also, uh, I mean, one of the things we first really uh, realized we needed this for is uh, GCC 11 was released and it changed a bit the includes for the standard library, like for the C++, C++ standard library to be better actually, right? So they include between themselves a bit less, but that means that some of the Qt code stopped compiling, right? Because it's hard to figure out all the includes you need. You basically just compile, and if it's compiled, it's like, cool, this is enough, right? It's, 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 that works. But with GCC 11, there was some, uh, I think it was limits include that is not include anymore while including, I don't know, std vector or whatever. So Qt stopped compiling. So well, we definitely needed that, right? We needed a way to have a Qt 5.15 that would compile with GCC 11. So that was one of the very important things we, we decided to upload, obviously. So a bit of, of the future. KDE will move to Qt 6 at some point, right? I mean, as I mentioned, probably not this year, maybe at the end of the year, who knows? most probably next year, right? That means that obviously our focus on, on maintaining a 515 budget will decrease a little. Not totally, because obviously distributions are gonna keep shipping Plasma 5 for a while, right? So we will still maintain to some degree the, the 515 budget for, for very important issues, obviously, right? If you imagine that GCC 12 comes out and we have the same problem that things don't compile, obviously we will fix that, right? But it, it, I mean, I think it makes sense that as we move more towards Qt 6, we will put less effort on, on this budget collection. So 5.15.3 uh, was released on March, as I mentioned. Will we get this as open source at all? I don't know. I mean, there's this clause about uh, Qt having to release the things uh, 12 months later than, than they, they'd release them, but I'm not a lawyer. I don't know if that actually applies or since they already released Qt 6, they are already covered by that. Uh, we will see and, and what will happen if they actually release it. Right? If they actually release it, it's gonna be a, <laughs> kind of a pain for us. I mean, it's going to be good, right? I mean, if we want them to release it, don't get me wrong, uh, because it, it will obviously have uh, fixes and, and we want those. But if they release it as a turbo, how do we mix that with the big bad fixes we already have or not? So, it, it, I mean, cute company people, if you're listening, please do release 5.15.3 as open source and please do release it as a good repo so we can just uh, rebase, merge, whatever, which will make our life so much easier. So Qt is releasing 6.2 soon-ish. I don't remember, but in a few months. And it's going to be LTS, again, only commercially, right? So are we going to have a 6.2 KD patch collection? I don't know. I mean, I don't have a, a, a I can see the future. But as I mentioned before, there hasn't been much use for, for intra version LTS releases in, in KDE. So my if you made me bet right now, my bet would be that we wouldn't have, we will not have a, a, a 62 patch collection, but who knows, right? I mean, the, 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 the future might be uh, interesting in this regard. Okay, so this was the end of my talk. Uh, I want you to ask yourself these four questions and I can actually give you my answers. Uh, so in case you were not paying attention, you can get four uh, quick overviews of, of what it was about. So who's doing this? It's, it's us, it's KDE, right? So when are we doing it? We're doing it right now. How? We're doing it in Invent. There's some branches that we cherry pick commits from the Qt company, uh, well, not the Qt company, the Qt upstream committers, so, so we get the fixes we need. Why? Well, because, I mean, 
we need it right that, that we're gonna get we're gonna be stuck for the good for the good definition of stuck with q 515 for a while so we need to make sure that q 515 stays in good shape right so that's that's it now i think i have some time for questions so if there are questions i will try to answer them as best as i can yes thank you very much albert we indeed have uh, time for questions and we do have questions so um starting with one from jonathan riddle will the q 5.15 point x commercial releases be open sourced at all or does the kd free Qt agreement not require that right so that i i, I mentioned that in the, my minus one slide i'm i'm not sure i we have to look at that more carefully because as i mentioned there's i mean there's lots of legalese around it and it says there has to be a continued development of Qt, blah 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 but that Qt 6 is, is continued development of Qt, right so if that applies to all the releases and on only some of the releases I'm, I'm not sure i should know better because i i, I am part of the Qt free foundation now but uh, yeah i don't have an answer for that i mean okay but yep. yeah we have to look into it okay next question also from jonathan is the Qt abi has been bumped to 515 free are there plans for when to bump it again Right, so uh, that's the thing I mentioned too. We didn't bump the ABI, the ABI was bumped for us, right? We we started on the top of uh, the Qt 515 branches and the ABI, the ABI number had already been changed. It's not us that has decided to do change anything. So we are not gonna change anything because we didn't change this thing. So it's gonna be stay there forever unless we get uh, releases from Qt and, and we put ourselves on top and then it will be changed, but we're not gonna change that. Okay, thanks. And the final question I see here is from Shinjo, and I'm sending a link that was uh, part of the question in our chat here. Um, have you heard about this patch set, probably originating from Telegram? And it seems to be a patch set to Qt. Okay, we have not seen that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just clicked the link. I had not seen that before. I'm not even sure if I should be looking at this because if those patches are not contributed uh, upstream to Qt, uh, that always creates weird okay. licensing well, well, weird licensing issues. So I've closed the the, the patch now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we should have uh, maybe go talk to them and say, hey, work with us. Because as I mentioned before, it's always a, a silly idea to do the same thing twice, right? I mean, if, if you can have if you can do it once, why would you do it twice, right? So it doesn't make any sense for us to be keeping a patch set and for the Telegram people, if this is the Telegram people, keeping a patch set, right? It's just, it's just let's keep one and everything will be, everyone will be happier. Of course. Uh, that was all of the questions. Albert, thank you very much for this talk, for this presentation. And uh, yeah, we'll be seeing uh, each other probably on the closing. Uh, yeah closing uh, sessions. Okay, thank you, Albert. Yep, thank you. Bye. Okay, bye.